On the surface of the moon, survival hinged on one engine, the ascent engine, the rocket that would lift two astronauts off another world, push them back into lunar orbit, and deliver them to safety. A single point of no return, one ignition, one chance. But before Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin trusted their lives to this engine, it had already proven itself once, not on the moon, but high above Earth. January 22, 1968, Apollo 5, the first uncrewed flight of the lunar module. In the vacuum of space, 140 miles above the planet, NASA carried out a series of engineering trials that would shape every lunar mission to come. For the ascent engine, this was the first and only time it would fire in flight conditions before Apollo 11. Among these trials was the legendary fire in the hole test, an ignition ordered while the ascent stage was still attached to the descent stage a test designed to simulate an abort during lunar descent, a violent, instantaneous blast meant to prove that the ascent engine could light under the worst possible conditions. The engine delivered. The burn was clean, but it was short, mere seconds of thrust, a glimpse of reliability, not a full demonstration. Because the ascent engine had a limit written into its very design, it could never be hot-fired on Earth for a full-duration burn. It was too light, too thin, too optimized for a single use. A full test would damage it beyond flight worthiness. This engine was built for one purpose, one mission profile, and one flawless ignition. A gamble stacked on meticulous component testing, destructive trials of non-flight units, and the cold, unwavering confidence of NASA's engineers. And when the moment arrived, July 21, 1969, the gamble paid off. The ascent engine roared to life at Tranquility Base, lifting humanity's hope and two men from the Sea of Tranquility back toward the waiting command module and the stars. The Lunar Module Ascent Engine was a single point of failure. No backup motor, no alternative escape plan, no redundancy in propulsion. If this engine didn't fire at the end of a lunar EVA, if it sputtered, stalled, or simply refused to start in the silent darkness of the moon, Apollo ended right there. Mission planners considered dozens of ways to create fallback options. None survived the weight budget. Every ounce of mass mattered. Every pound subtracted from the ascent stage was a pound added to lunar payload capacity or descent margin. The ascent engine had to be reliable, simple, lightweight, and absolutely guaranteed to work the first time. To do that, NASA made a radical choice. They designed the engine so it was too fragile to be test-fired before flight. The ascent engine used hypergolic propellants, aerosene 50 fuel and nitrogen tetroxide oxidizer. When they touch, they ignite spontaneously. No igniter, no spark, no timing mechanism. It sounds simple, but hypergols come with a vice grip of engineering constraints. One, they are corrosive. Once you fire an engine built with thin walls, lightweight alloys, and an ablative chamber, its internal structure starts degrading immediately. Two, the engine was strictly one use. A full duration burn would damage the flight hardware. A partial burn 
would contaminate it. 3. Post-firing contamination meant the engine could never be used again. Residue, acid formation, chamber erosion, all fatal to reliability. This turned the ascent engine into a paradox. To prove it was reliable, NASA needed to test it. But testing it would destroy it. So they broke the entire philosophy of hot fire testing and took a more surgical approach. Test every component individually. Stress hardware beyond operational limits. Fire non-flight test units to destruction. Analyze every failure mode. Dissect the engine like a mechanical autopsy. And when it came to the engines flown to the moon, they were assembled, inspected, and sealed, but never fired. Not at sea level, not in vacuum chambers, not even for a fraction of a second. NASA was betting human lives on theory, statistics, material science, and trust. The Lunar Module Ascent Engine was born at Bell Aerosystems, a company already seasoned in the art of pressure-fed rocket design. They had a pedigree, Agena, XLAR-81, and several other hypergolic-driven systems that proved one thing, complexity kills engines. Bell engineers carved away every moving part they could. The result? A rocket engine with no turbo pumps, no igniter, no spark plugs, no rotating machinery, no variable throttle, no engine gimbling system. It was the closest thing to failure-proof a rocket engine could ever be. The engine produced roughly 3,500 pounds of thrust depending on configuration and mission, enough to lift the 10,000-pound ascent stage off the moon and into a stable lunar orbit. To understand why engineers trusted an untested engine, you need to understand how the engine worked. 1. Ablative Combustion Chamber Instead of cooling channels or complex regenerative cooling, the chamber burned away, layer by layer, in a controlled manner. Ablative designs trade reusability for extreme simplicity. You don't cool the chamber, you let it erode. 2. Pressure-fed propellant system. Instead of pumps, the engine used helium to push fuel and oxidizer into the chamber. Helium, stored in high-pressure tanks, fed through regulators into the propellant tanks. 3. Hypergolic ignition. No ignition sequence. No electrical circuits for the spark. The instant the propellants met, they ignited. 4. Fixed thrust. The LM had to work around this with attitude control thrusters. 5. Dual redundant propellant valves. Two sets of parallel valves ensured that if one set failed shut, the other would still open. No cycling, no modulation, just one clean, irreversible command, open. This wasn't just engineering. It was reliability weaponized. NASA wasn't building an engine to last. They were building an engine designed to work perfectly, exactly once. To compensate for the lack of full engine tests, NASA took a different approach. One thousands of valve cycles. Valves were opened and closed under stress 
temperature swings, and vacuum conditions. 2. Destructive test engines. Complete engines identical to flight hardware were fired to failure. 3. Materials analysis. Every failed test unit was torn down and dissected. Engineers studied ascent ablator erosion, nozzle cracking, injector plate wear, helium regulator drift, seal degradation. 4. Redundancy via simplicity. The fewer parts that could fail, the fewer tests needed. By the time Apollo 11 launched, NASA had compiled an enormous dataset proving one thing. The ascent engine design was so simple that a full hot fire wasn't needed to guarantee reliability. July 21, 1969, Tranquility Base. Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong power up the ascent stage. No drama, no countdown, no plume at first. Then, ignition. The engine ignites instantly. The LM lurches upward, guiding itself toward lunar orbit. No test flight, no prior burn, and yet, the engine behaves exactly as predicted. The zero failure streak begins. Across every lunar landing mission, Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17, the ascent engine was flawless. No ignition failures, no thrust instability, no valve lockups, no chamber burn through, not one anomaly jeopardized a mission. The closest scare came during Apollo 15, when engineers identified a helium regulator concern after the mission. But even then, the engine had performed without complaint. For an engine that was never tested whole, its performance record borders on the miraculous. When Apollo 13 suffered catastrophic oxygen tank failure, the lunar module became a lifeboat. Had re-entry targeting failed, the ascent engine would have been used as the primary propulsion system to correct the trajectory. It never fired. The crew relied on the descent engine instead. But the ascent engine was ready. NASA had enough confidence to entrust it with the lives of three astronauts in the most perilous situation in Apollo history. This wasn't theoretical reliability. This was earned trust. After ascent, the engine's burn placed the LM into a rendezvous orbit. Once the LM docked with the command module, the ascent engine's roll was over. Its entire life's purpose lasted. One ignition, a few minutes of thrust, one chance to save two lives, and it performed flawlessly every single time. NASA broke convention and proved something profound. Reliability isn't always achieved through complexity. Sometimes it's achieved by eliminating every variable until failure becomes impossible. The ascent engine was the purest expression of that philosophy. Simple, brutal, elegant, single use, Guaranteed. The engineers at Bell Aerosystems didn't just design a rocket, they designed a promise. A promise that when the moment came, when two astronauts waited on the surface of another world, 
the engine beneath them would not hesitate. It never did. In the end, the Lunar Module's Ascent Engine stands as one of the quiet triumphs of Apollo engineering. Not as loud as the Saturn V, not as famous as the Guidance Computer, not as glamorous as the Moonwalk, but behind every mission, behind every safe return, was a rocket motor that had never once been tested as a complete engine. A small, unassuming, hypergolic heart that beat once and was never needed again. And it never failed. <laughs>